In this video, I'll be outlining an efficient and comprehensive method to study solver solutions, which may be particularly helpful for those that are new to solvers and don't know where to begin. To start with, I should note that when reviewing a sim, we never want to focus solely on how our specific hand is being played, because when we analyze a hand this way, we lose the context of what is driving the overall strategies. Right, the same hand may be played in completely different ways depending on the context, such as the prior action, the positions of the players, and the SPR. So instead, to develop a deeper understanding of range construction and counter strategies, we need to review how the entire range is being played for both hero and villain on each street. Now obviously, analyzing each individual combination in both players' ranges is not really feasible, so I have three practical tips for you to focus on at each decision point to help maximize your study efficiency. The first tip is to focus on the tendency of the overall range and the predominant bet sizings being used, and the reason why we do this is to help train our intuition on how board textures interact with ranges and how that in turn affects strategies. So in this case, we have a button versus big blind single race pot in a six max game. And we see that on this ace king 10 rainbow board, the solver is playing quite aggressively in the button's shoes on the flop, betting almost 75% of the time, including by using the large full pot sizing with high frequency. Obviously, this is a board that's going to favor the preflop aggressor, who has a huge nut advantage at the top of the range with all the straights, sets, two pairs, and strongest top pairs. That being said, the big blind has an advantage in this middle part of the range with moderate equity, which warrants some amount of checking. The second tip is to focus on where the cutoff points exist between different actions, between calling and folding, checking and value betting, realizing and bluffing, etc, etc. And the reason why we do this is because once we know where the cutoff points are, we will have a general sense of how hands on either side of the threshold should be played without having to analyze them individually. So for example, in this case, when the big blind is facing a half pot C bet, we see a pretty distinct cutoff point between calling and folding at third pair. And if we isolate these combos, we see that 100% of these hands with either a gut shot or a backdoor flush draw are calling, and all other 10x combos without this additional incremental equity are pure folds. And the final tip when reviewing a sim is to focus on where the bluffs are coming from. Right, We never want to show up in any spot where our opponent knows that we have zero bluffs because we'll lose a ton of EV on our value bets. So unless you're playing a total scrub, you should always have some bluffs in every spot, and we can look to the solver for cues on finding the best bluffing candidates. So for example, on this potential turn barrel spot for the button, if we isolate the unmade hands, we see that the solver is heavily prioritizing bluffing with draws, which makes intuitive sense since these hands have the potential to suck out on the river. In fact, if we group all of the draws together, we see that the EV regret for betting 3 quarters pot is less than 1%, which means that if you wanted to simplify your strategy and bet 100% of all of these unmade hands, the maximum amount you would lose in expectation against a GTO opponent is less than 1 tenth of a big blind. Similarly, if you decided to just check and give up with all of your unmade hands without a draw, the EV regret is zero. This means that you can simply check all of the combos within this group without having to examine each one individually to try to figure out if any of them are bluffing some small percentage of the time. So hopefully these three tips can help you guys get more out of your solver study. And this method of analyzing sims can even be used with other solvers, it's just 10 times more efficient when using GTO check. So that's the video for today, thanks for watching and until next time stay balanced. Let's <laughs> go.